this game you're watching me play right now, it's like, uh, it's almost, oh no, no, no. It's like Nazi zombies, but for little car robots. I created this in like five minutes using Gemini 2.5, completely for free. And in this video today, I'm gonna show you how you can do the same. Also, how to make websites, etc., etc. So let me just, uh, there we go, game over. <laughs> so, Gemini 2.5 has been released. It's their most intelligent AI model yet. So, Google is under a lot of criticism because everyone's leveling up their models and stuff, and Google is just kind of like hanging around in the background, so everyone's thinking. But apparently not, they've now come out and they're leading benchmarks. So if we scroll down here, you can see the benchmarks, all the different ones here on the left hand side. I have a video explaining the major ones, but essentially, as you can see, the bold is where the best, or best-ish, because um, <laughs> that's higher than that. But in any case, you can see that they, across the board, are pretty much the best um, right now. So they have enhanced reasoning abilities. So as you can see, reasoning and knowledge, humanity's last exam, still really low compared to a human, but you know, 18.8, .8, much higher than all the other ones, which is cool. And the main feature of it is advanced coding. So like here, for example, the one they show is that you can create this dinosaur game. So like the one you get when your web browser's not working by just giving it one prompt. So it's called a one shot, which is where you give it one prompt and you say, make this game and it goes and does it. Um, so it's essentially like every vibe coder's dream. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create stuff like this completely for free. So this example game here has a bit of rendering and stuff, but this is all fully in the browser under an HTML file. Oh. So to get a game like this to run with no coding, so I don't have to download it and save anything, I literally just run the file, as you can see here, from downloads. We we'll go over to Google AI Shadow. So this is where we're going to use, or the website we're going to use, to run this for free. So if we go up here and go to aishadow.google.com, you'll come here. We can ignore that, because I think it's because I have so many prompts open. But Google AI Shadow is kind of like an AI playground. Now, people say if you're going to do like a proper application, that you probably should uh, pay for it. But the Playground version is absolutely perfect. Like, I've essentially built SaaS applications fully in Playground. Now, the way you can use it for free, and the way to kind of look at this, because it's a bit overwhelming at first, is essentially up the top here we have system instructions. So this is where you can give some toner styles or whatever. So this is where, an example I've said before is like, you know, you are an Italian restaurant. <laughs> So then now if I say something like, what's for dinner, paste that in. You can now see 2.5 thinking, and I'll show you how you can select which model you want. You can see here it's thinking, so identify the user's needs, establish the persona, brainstorm core Italian dishes, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, welcome to our restaurant tonight's specials. So as you can see, that's the power of system prompts. But the way that we get it to use 2.5 is on the left hand side, so left, right hand side here. Wait till I move me out of the way. Oh. So over here, we have a place where you can select the model. And for the model here, we're gonna click on that. You get Gemini 2, you also get this one here, and then Gemini 1.5, and then Gemma. But we're looking at 2.5 Pro Experimental. And you can see when I highlight on it, that the input and output is zero. So it's completely free if you're gonna use this API as well. Um, and then it gives you a bit of other stuff too. So for a while I've been using the 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental for like SaaS apps, because then you can use it with a completely free API key. Um, so yeah, now you can use 2.5. Now if you want the API key as well, you can go and create one, which we'll show you how to do in a minute. So if you select that one, this is you now in it here, and you can just write prompts in the bottom, and then that's you. Let me pull this over. Uh, obviously as well, there's other things you can check out here, temperature, etc., and then token count. So within this window, you can have up to a million tokens. And for reference, when I created that car simulator, I done loads and loads. Like, look at this, right? Look at all of the, you know, scroll it. Because every time it was sending me back the entire HTML file, um, so that I could just run it straight from downloads. So like, it gives me a file like this, and I just drag and drop it up here, and then boom, it runs. Um, and for that, it's still not even at 100,000 tokens, and look at this. So, yeah, 
you can do pretty much whatever you want in it. So once you have that, you can see on the left hand side now, create prompts, that will start a fresh one. Stream real time, which is pretty cool, so you can talk, show or share your screen, which is cool, and it will interact with it because uh, Gemini works with visuals as well, which is cool. Starter apps, and then you can tune models as well, but you're probably not into that. And then library, so this is where you can see all of your previous prompts that you've used. And then also prompt gallery, where you can go and actually explore ideas. So it's pretty cool, so you can like scroll here and say something like, da 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 da, coffee bot, or whatever, and then it's here, and then you can run it, you can edit it, etc. Now, if you want to get an API key, get API key up here, click on that, and then you can click create API key. Now, if you don't have an existing cloud project, you might have to go and make one. I have a bunch of them. Just click on one, create an API key, and then copy that, and it's sorted. And because, as I had shown you here in Modo, that it's completely free, you can use that API completely for free, whether you're using it for like Bolt, or whether you want to use Klein in VS Code or something. Basically, these are ways to... Klein is for writing uh, code, so inside like so inside like VS Code, we can actually get Klein in here to write code. Or Bolt.new creates websites from scratch, and then you can interact with it, and it'll build this entire website, which is cool. So I think I might make a video on that one, actually, because that was pretty cool. So the one we're going to make today is this car simulator. To get it up to like this scale and having like leaderboards and uh, coins and other cars, etc. So as you can see, here's the other car. Here he is. Uh, I went back and forth and I was like, add this, change this. But to get the original one, let me scroll up to the top, I'll show you the prompt. There's a prompt actually that was floating around on, on Twitter. So let me copy that. And then we'll just create a new prompt. Paste it in here. So can you create a simple 3D car simulator with 3JS and a single HTML? The reason you want it in a single HTML is because then, as I was saying, it's all in one file. We don't have to run it on your computer as such. You don't have to py install Python, etc. Everything will just run automatically. Um, and I'll show you, you can actually use, so I built a website as well, which has the API key for using Gemini built into it, which is super cool. Because then it means you can actually use Gemini inside an HTML app, which it made we'll show you in a minute, it's well cool. So anyway, paste that in, run it, and then you'll see it will start thinking. So now it will start being like, right, what will I do? What do I need to get? So it's basically like a reasoning model, and it starts thinking before it actually executes. And then it tells you as well the length of time that it takes, and this will just continue to continue to run here. What's my cat doing? Sorry mate, can't be on here today. I'm videoing, come on, hey you skip. Oh, don't kick my cat. There we go, cat's away. Right, and it started now giving us a response, key features, limitations, and then it starts writing out this file. And it's actually pretty fast, and it will be fully accurate once it's done. So you have two bits here, copy to clipboard and download, and we'll just download it and then just run it straight away, like instantly. So it shouldn't take long. Um, it'll be pretty fast. Um, and then if you want any amendments, which is what I had done, you then just go back and ask for it to change stuff. So, for example, when I was doing it, I got the basic one. Let me see if I can open it from downloads here. So the very first one was this here. Boom. And from here, I then was like, right, this is so slow. There's no one else here. The graphics are rubbish. There's no coins, no leaderboards. It's just pretty boring. And so then I asked it to, to upgrade it. And then after a few iterations, as you can see, let me plop some in. So now it has coins. I think at this point it has an opponent as well. And then I'm like, right, now upgrade the graphics, etc. Then it upgrades the graphics. And then we finally get like the one we're on. So you can just continually upgrade on top of it, which is, which is actually really cool. Um, that's still going. Still going on. Um, there we go. Let's download it. Let's open it up. Just so you can see our real time how it works. Whoa. Whoa! <laughs> hey, this one's pretty cool. Hey, this one's cooler than the one I had. Although I can't go right and left, I don't think someone let me go falls or battles. And I can go off the map. Or does it fall my mouse? I don't know. This is the dangers of vibe code and kids. I gave the exact same prompt and got this. And this. 
<laughs> but yeah, so you can just keep going back and forth. You can just copy the, the prompt and then write it in another one and give it a try if you want. Change the temperature. So like if you remove that down, there'll be like no creative responses up here, super creative. And then this one's in the middle, meaning basically creative means it might lie, just so you know. So that's how to make a simple game. Um, also within Gemini, something that's really cool is, let me move me again. Something that's really cool here is you can plus, you can actually share your Google Drive files, record audios, camera, and even YouTube videos and talk away to them, which is super cool, um, all built into here. So the other example I had shown you was this uh, vegan recipe finder, which I thought would be interesting to talk about because essentially I asked it for a website where I can then select ingredients, like say in the pantry or in the cupboard or fridge, I have tofu, I've got avocado and I've got, you know, I don't know, bell peppers and ginger, coconut milk and pasta. And I'm like, what can I make? So I just generate a recipe and it will literally use its own AI, API, to then go and search recipes using these ingredients inside Google using Gemini 2.5 completely for free. Um, and here's an AI generated recipe. Creamy avocado tofu pasta with ginger pepper sauce. Boom. It's so cool, man. And this is actually really handy as well because um, I'm vegan and we never know what to make for food. So the way to do this kind of thing as well, and by the way, as you see, critical warning. I thought that was quite interesting though because it means that you can get around things because it's trying to moan at me about security. Let me show you. So if we go into library, go to vegan recipe finder, and I'll scroll right up to the top. And so I ask, can you create a simple functioning website, right, with buttons for vegan ingredients and blah, blah, blah. But then the problem with that is that originally it just gives me back this HTML file where you select some, generate, and then if it doesn't have a recipe in the database, it's like, I don't know how to use it. It's like, there's nothing there. So instead, I then go back and I say, what is it? I'm like, yeah, no recipes found, matching your selection. Try select, blah, blah, blah. Can you update using the Google API um, to generate? But I don't, but I want it as a single HTML. And then I give it the API code, which you actually get up here. So get code. I move me again, you get it up here, get code. And then from here, you can include or not include the prompt history and then copy. And then this is literally the code to use Gemini 2.5, which is cool. Um, and then that worked, but it was like, uh, you know, I've actually here, I'll delete this so I don't mind sharing that. But here's the API key I had given it and it didn't want to use it. And then I had, uh, then I had to say to it, I was like, you know, I want you to actually use it. And then, boom, I added that in. And now we have this re website which runs using my API key. Um, so let's change another one, you know, blah, blah, blah. See what it says. Roasted soup potato and chickpea bowl with crispy tofu. Boom, sounds nice. <laughs> so as you can see, it's actually really good at coding. One thing though I did want to try out was NA10. So if you, have seen, I now have a school community for applying AI. So currently its main focus is NA10, but it teaches you everything that you need to know to start applying AI today. So an intro to AI from knowing literally nothing, right through to then what is RAG, prompt engineering, then NAN masterclass, so how to actually use NAN to create AI agents. And then oh, I have a bunch of solutions as well inside the classroom. So. You have like any end solutions and AI solutions from Python. Um, and here we've got a bunch of different stuff. And this is just continually getting added to every other day. It's also a community of people chatting away. And we have calendar where we have a call every single week. You can come and ask me whatever you want for an hour. So inside here, um, I'm going to be sharing all the different code example for, whoops, for example, for this here um, and for this and more detailed instructions as well. But uh, yeah, so within NAN, I then tried to get Google to create an NAN. So we've got prompt gal, no, library, NAN JSON template. So I pass it in an NAN workflow, just an example here. And I say, can you write one? I want one that's a social media agent, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then it gave me it back with uh, code comments, which don't work for JSON. 
So then I asked it to remove it and change stuff. And eventually I tried to get in, but it didn't work. So you can see that these are here. It says node currently not installed. So basically it didn't work. Um, so there are all these guys online who are saying, you know, never buy a skill for any end templates where you can just make them yourself using like ChatGPT. <sighs> kind of, but also kind of not. Because as you can see here, it didn't actually work. So there are limitations. Um, and as I've shown you here, you know, it isn't the same every time, but it is really quite good. Um, I'm just stuck in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so that's it for today. Join the school community, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.